Women's Auxiliary Group. Today, we have a very interesting topic as a lot of us can truly relate on this. Because of the pandemic, our mental health is greatly impacting our wellness. We are truly honored to have Dr. Krina Lichua, who will share with us our views on some of these mental health concerns and how we can cope up with the challenging adjustments of the new normal, especially with our remote learning. If you have any questions and concerns related to our topic, boosting mental wellness, please feel free to write in the comment box. Thank you. To begin, may we request our dear principal, Reverend Father Paulino King de Lapide, to lead us with the opening prayer. So in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father in heaven, we praise and thank you for this new day. We dedicate this day to you, asking you to bless us with your guidance and protection. We ask you to bless in particular the series of webinars, the Queen of Talks, which we inaugurate this morning. Bless our speaker, Dr. Quina uh, Lim Chua. Bless all the participants and the loved ones. Bless our teachers, students, and their families. And grant us the faith that enables us to live with the trials and sorrows of life and help us to see in them your guiding hand. We ask this of you to the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And Saint Jude Thaddeus, pray for, pray us. for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good morning to, to all. <clears throat> Thank you, Father King. To give us his welcome remarks, let us listen to our beloved school director, Reverend Father Roland Aquino. Uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, and friends, uh, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to be able to welcome you to this webinar conference featuring Dr. Queen, Queen Ali Chua to share her expertise on boosting mental wellness. It is the first part of the three series Queen of Talks organized by the St. Jude Alumni Association in cooperation with the St. Jude Catholic School Parents Auxiliary Group or the PAG. Mental health and wellness has now been at the center of practically every individual's concern and priority amid the health crisis and dreadful uncertainties spawned by the present pandemic and now by the onslaught of catastrophic natural calamities. In the recent study conducted among schools with the advent of varied and complex remote learning programs. There is a silent tragedy that is unfolding today in our homes. And this has something to do with an urgent concern among the most vulnerable, our children. Even prior to this pandemic, in the last 15 years or so, researchers have given us increasingly alarming statistics on sharp and steady increase in childhood mental illness that is now reaching epidemic proportions. Today's seminar is very timely. We are all vulnerable as any other human being confronted with the uncertainties of our time. Much attention must be paid to prevention of mental disorders in all the age and risk factors or groups. I thank Quina for her time with us this morning. It is my sincere wish that her expert conference proves of benefit both for the school and for every family. Good morning to all. Thank you, Father Aquino. Up next is our highly respected alumni president, Mr. John C., who will give us his opening remarks and why Quina Talks was organized. Good morning, everyone. I hope uh, everyone is in a good place and is healthy and well. Thank you very much for attending this very important webinar. 
This is actually one of the first collaboration between the St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association and the parents auxiliary groups of uh, St. Jude Catholic School. I'm hoping this is the start of potentially more collaboration between our two organizations as we try to create a sense of inclusiveness among all Judanite communities. I'm grateful to attorney Irene Phoenix Mauricio, which is the high school PAG president, uh, Michelle Yvonne Chon, our elementary PAG president, and Elizabeth Colin Chu, who's our ECD PAG president's uh, president, for their support and enthusiasm for this project. I'm also grateful to Father Rocky Aquino and Father King Belarmida of uh, St. Jude Catholic School for their support coming from the school. And from the AA side, uh, we have the hardworking tandem of uh, Jehan Siali and uh, Wilson C, who have put in a lot of time to make these events a reality. This is the first of a series of webinars with renowned psychologists and a specialist in math and science education, on Ms. Quina Lee. Uh, uh, we are grateful that she has given us her precious time to share what she knows about the various topics we will discuss. We are living in really unusual times. Our life as we know it has been turned topsy-turvy. Our typical Linus blankets and safety nets have all disappeared and we struggled on how to regain some normalcy in our lives. These put tremendous stress on our mental well-being. But as a popular KTV or rather Korean telenovela series goes, it's okay not to be okay. We need to understand what's causing our anxiety and stress and learn how to cope with it. I'm sure Quina will be able to share some of these. This won't be the last of our projects to help Judenites, alumni, students, parents, teachers, administrators, and friends in their daily struggles to cope and find opportunities. I'm hoping that Together, we can work towards a community that will feed on each other and support each other. Learn as much as you can during these sessions and practice them in real life. I'm looking forward to hearing inspiring stories from you on how we will beat the effects of COVID-19 together. Jiao Chongte, Jiao St. Jude. Thank you very much. Thank you, AA President Johnny. During the planning, the topic boosting mental wellness was proposed by our high school PAG president and also an alumna of St. Jude Catholic School, attorney Irene Phoenix Mauricio. Let us hear from her why she has chosen this for us. Hello everyone, good morning. This is attorney Irene Phoenix Mauricio. I'm the current high school PAG president. In our culture, mental health is often considered to be a taboo topic. We are expected to be resilient, focused, and not to give in to this place of emotion. However, we must admit that the way it was for our parents and for us growing up is so different from the circumstances that we face today. Especially with the ongoing COVID pandemic, there are so many more elements that negatively affect our mental health, which is why I suggested this topic. I have heard from students, friends, relatives, fellow parents, and even those from the older generation, how anxious they feel towards the future how uncertain everything is, and how many are at a loss on how to cope and address their feelings. More so for children and teenagers who used to be so carefree. A lot of people feel embarrassed to talk about their feelings and to seek help from experts. So I feel that this talk and this topic would be hopefully be a very effective and safe avenue where we can learn how to address these issues in order to help our children, our family members, and most importantly, ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Pag President Irene. And now the moment we're all waiting for to introduce our distinguished guest speaker. He's a fellow trustee of the SJCSAA board, Mr. Wilson C. Good morning, everyone. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our speaker for today, who happens to be a very, a good, very good friend of mine. We have known each other for many years now, and I've seen how she has helped parents and students in more ways than one. She graduated from the Ateneo de Manila University, BS Mathematics, 
summa cum laude. Mm -hmm. She has a master's degree in counseling psychology and a doctorate degree in clinical psychology from the same university where she is now a full professor. A licensed psychologist, she writes all in the family column for the Philippine Daily Inquirer and has authored books on math, popular science, education, parenting, family and teen issues, mental health, family businesses, and inspirational stories. A board member, speaker, and consultant for schools, government, civic groups, and family businesses. She also consults for the Department of Education and the Department of Science and Technology and sits on the board of businesses and academic. During this pandemic, several webinars for students, parents, teachers, civil groups, businesses on online teaching and learning, resilience and mental health, science, best practices of family businesses, financial literacy, among others. She has garnered various recognition, including the 10 outstanding young men, the outstanding women in the nation's service, the Metrobank Foundation Outstanding Teachers, the DOST Great Women and Men of Science, the outstanding young scientists, among others. She was also featured in Asia's Inc. magazines, Who's Hot in Asia, and Singapore Heritage Centers, Southeast Asian Personalities of Chinese Descent. Friends, let's welcome Dr. Quina Lee Chua. Wilson, thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. And I take heart from what Ms. Irene said a while ago, that yes, mental health is a topic that usually has been taboo. And I'm just going to say it straight because I'm a very straight talking person especially in the Filipino Chinese community. So when Wilson asked me if I can do this talk, the first question I told him was, uh, would the school be ready for this? I've given this mental health talk to more than 50 schools, but most of them are not Filipino Chinese because again, our culture uh, sadly is uh, often still not open enough to hear the realities, et cetera to the detriment of our students. I will now start sharing screen and go through uh, this morning, in, aside from the usual self-care that other webinars do, I want to emphasize that mental health is an issue before the pandemic. So it is not just the pandemic. It, it, we, we can blame the pandemic for many things, but mental health issues have already been on the rise for the past 20 years around the world, not just in the Philippines, particularly among the young people. So I'm going to do straight talk this morning on the risk factor so you can use the information not just for this pandemic, but perhaps forever. So scientifically, what are the risk factors for mental health issues? Biggest one is the history of previous problems if a child or you have been depressed or suicidal before, that is the major risk factor. Uh, past history. Genetics is also there. Um, for, for, for depression, it can be as high as 40%. So that means if the mother or the father or both are depressed, for instance, there is a bigger chance that the children will be born and that's born, it's genetic, depressed. And when circumstances hit, such as yes, the pandemic, the depression can flower into something worse. Exposure to serious aberrant behavior. So constant family conflicts, even father, mother, um, arguing constantly. An argument or two is fine, but constant argument. Many of my students say their mental issues start when say the father starts having an affair and they're forced to choose between the father and the mother. That one tears many students apart. A friend suicide can also trigger something. Victimization due to several differences. Uh, right now, I tell my students that because um, the world is more open, their generation actually is more open. Discrimination due to say LGBTQ is not as bad as it was in our time or in many of the people who say that they are not hetero in gender would actually have to 
you know, have to, to lie about it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, right now, this is not as bad, but there still is bullying and that can cause, um, heighten the risk. Alcohol and drug use can heighten the risk. Gaming and media addiction. I use the term addiction, okay? Gaming, a little bit of gaming is fine. I keep on telling people in my time, I was the champion in Pac-Man and Space Invaders, okay? So addiction is a different thing. A little bit of gaming to de-stress would be okay. Although if I were you, I would find other ways of de-stressing, not digital, because many of us are already, our eyesight, our, you know, our brains are already, we're too digital now because everything is done on screen. So I tell my students, the best way to de-stress right now is actually not digital. But this is addiction. Okay? Addiction is different from ordinary using it for de-stressing. Extremely violent games is highly concerning. Okay? Um, Pac-Man and Space Invaders are not violent at all, thankfully. Right now, I think some of the parents, you even play it, uh, our kids have become desensitized to it. And that would be a risk because if they are used to seeing desensitized pain on screen, some of them also are desensitized to harming themselves. Okay, so self-harm is also a topic I will discuss. Alienation from friends and family, bullying, serious losses, uh, failed romantic relationships for some weird reason. I never thought this was a factor, but it, it apparently is. Many times if a student, um, if a teenager loses, breaks up with his first, his or her first love. In the Ateneo, we actually, I actually make sure binabantayan ko yung bata muna. For some weird reason, many of them right now cannot deal with a breakup. Uh, even if breakups are as old as time itself. Um, I keep on telling my students in my time when, when my friends, you know, I myself underwent breakup. Of course, we would cry uh, for women. We would talk it over with our women friends and all the entire barcada would hate the guy. You know, that, that's a way of coping. For the men, they would go drinking, etc. But right now, sometimes if they break up, they just want to jump from the building. It's a totally different, it's the same reason, but the coping mechanisms are different. The more the factors, the higher the risk. So sometimes I'm also quite worried if parents who are too protective will actually ban their kids from having any, you know, any uh, romantic relationships. Um, one of my students, sadly, and this is uh, not a Judenite, but Filipino Chinese. So this student is an A student and a honor student. She, she allowed me to tell her story. So she was one of our top students from another Filipino Chinese school. And she's a very good lawyer. And I thought everything was fine. She was a straight A student under me. Uh, and I finally found out from some of her classmates 12 years later when she was 32 that she attempted to kill herself because her first boyfriend left her. And she had her first relationship at the age of 30. She couldn't cope. So sometimes it's a bit scary the way... Uh, we don't know. We don't know the resilience. We don't know the coping factors of our kids, even of ourselves, unless until it happens. So right now, this talk will be, I'm going to give you warning signs and what you can do proactively to prevent the worst case scenario. Warning signs, academic difficulties, sudden drop in grades. Note, I did not say that this is a D or an F. Why? Um, if the student is a lazy, fair student, which means anything goes, and the usual grade is a C, and the C becomes maybe a C minus, I wouldn't worry so much. It's probably average. If the student, though, is uh, an A student, and suddenly the A becomes a B minus, I would worry. So it, it, it's relative to the students. And what is scary about, and what is very toxic, that's my students are toxic about competition today, is that somehow, and I'm sorry, this one includes now some of my former, I've talked to several of my favorite St. Jude students who did well in my class. Many of them have graduated. Some of them are still in Ateneo and they tell me many things. So they are quite open and they tell me what's happening. They tell me the environment. Uh, so this one does include the St. Jude environment. Um, they actually complain 
that many times when they were in St. Jude and even when they were in Ateneo, their parents keep on comparing their grades to other people. Parents, stop it. Stop it. Okay, so please do not compare your children even among each other. They don't like it. Even the students, even the kids who do well, don't like being compared with their siblings who don't do as well. And that one really wreaks havoc with their mental health. If you want to compare, compare the students among their past performance, so vis-a-vis -vis their past performance. So tell them, wow, you're now an 80, you used to be 77, you worked hard. So you, that one is a good comparison. So don't say 80 ka lang, and bakit 90 yung kapatid mo? So don't do that, okay? So th that one, a lot of students now, they don't like it. You may say, but in our time, we used to do it. Yes, our parents used to do that, but somehow they raised, that in, raised us in a different way. We were able to take it. Today's children, do they lack grip? Parts of them do. And I will go a bit into that later. So when you're going to talk about grades, it is the past performance of the individual. Do not compare them with other people. Uh, social difficulties, suddenly you see your kid not wanting to talk to friends there. Everybody is Zooming and having a Zoom party and she doesn't want to attend. That could be a warning sign. Eating disturbances, significant weight gain or loss, significant. One or two pounds is fine. But 10 pounds in a month could be scary. Sleep disturbances, I'm a bit worried about this because practically all my students say that they sleep at 12 to 1 a.m. And I tell them that's ridiculous. Um, the people who sleep at 12, midnight or 1 a.m. do not have the study structures. It is, I'm not sure it has something to do with mental health, but I tell them if they're already suffering from mental health issues, insomnia is going to make it worse. And, and then they don't sleep and then when they are in class, before the pandemic, even during the pandemic, they have frequent sleepiness. So anxiety, panic attacks, they suddenly cannot breathe, they suddenly go cold. My students tell me the panic attacks normally affect their mothers. This is a bit funny. I don't have data to back it up. But they tell me that they know I'm going to talk to you now. So some of the things I'm going to tell you are requests from my students to tell you. So they say, mom, panic attack, mga nanay namin yan. I said, okay. Nanay, I don't know if that's true, but please, um, values are caught rather than taught. That's what a wise person told me. So, yes, we can lecture as I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you now, but many, many times, kids get reactions and feelings from what we parents do. So, yes, I know we are anxious about the pandemic, but we are adults. Yes, it is okay to be anxious. Yes, it is okay not to be okay. But having panic attacks in front of your children, and according to some of my students, they're the ones who even have to console their parents. That's a big burden on kids. Even if my students are now 20, 20 years old, 21, they're still rattled. They say, my mom is having a panic attack. My dad says she's overacting. You know, things like that. They don't like it. And then they actually say, mom, we cannot escape because 24-7 we're in the house and we hate it. So actual quotes. Um, Panic attacks, we'll talk about later how to control anxiety. Excessive pessimism, this is, this is the one I find hardest to deal with. So I have students now telling me, what's the use of studying? We're all going to, you know what, you know what they're gonna say, I just don't want to write it there. So if they keep on saying that, that is a warning sign. This, my students who are saying this, they're all in guidance. So uh, some of them, I have referred a uh, psychiatrist because they might need medication already. Uh, they're, they're extremely, extremely depressed and we're very worried that they're going to harm themselves soon. Mood swings. Uh, mania. Sometimes you have children who are depressed on Monday, then suddenly you say, ah, okay na. Tuesday, they're fine. And then Wednesday, they're not. So um, the, the bad thing about bipolar disorder is mania and depression are two sides of the same coin. Sometimes they don't want to do anything. Sometimes they are frantic and they want to do everything. That is also a warning sign. Okay, you want, the, the ones we want are people with stable moods. Meaning, yes, sometimes you're a bit blue, but you don't go into major depression. Sometimes, yes, you're a bit excited, but you don't go manic. Okay, so extremes of moods are a warning sign for us. And many of my students now are experiencing that. Uh, okay. Common issues we'll discuss today, there are actually usually nine, but. These are the ones that I'm most worried about. Mood disorders, bipolar, mania versus depression. Major depression, of course, which is a risk factor for suicide. 
self-harm, anxiety. This is practically, uh, in the pandemic, there's more anxiety, I think, than depression. People are more anxious than, the ones who are depressed, some of them, of course, clinically are still depressed. But anxiety is the one now that's, that's rising because of the uncertainty in this pandemic. And Asperger's syndrome, which is very, very uh, interesting. Many people don't know about it, but this affects many of the top students. And I've, yes, I have several Filipino Chinese students who suffer from this. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the ones in red are actual questions from parents in my other talks. So this one is, uh, but the parent just bravely just ask it. Why is suicide increasing in the young and is it? Sadly, yes. If you're going to look at figures, yes, it is increasing in the, in the young, but it's not just in the Philippines, it's around the world. In the US, it's actually worse. And in the top schools in the US, it's worse. Um, Harvard Crimson, so Harvard University, uh, ran a front page of a huge uh, issue. Crimson is their campus newspaper. Um, in 2017 or 2016, already they ran a huge issue because the students demanded it. So they found out that 10% of Harvard students already before going to Harvard already had mental health issues. And 25% are availing of the mental health services on campus, that's one fourth. And this is Harvard, where you know, practically everybody wants their kid to go to Harvard. The epidemic is also there. Stanford has such a huge epidemic on that one. Um, I know many students who are actually in Stanford and they tell me things about mental health stuff. So it's the, the top, so we're, it's not just here. So parents do not worry so much in terms of bakit sa Pilipinas lang, and I'm telling you this now because mental health is an issue we have to talk about. So hindi lang nangyayari dito. Nangyayari yan sa lahat, sa buong mundo. So why is it increasing? We don't know why it's increasing, but for me, okay, there could be the figures are higher because now there's more awareness. Lisa Ontiveros is my batchmate, so I texted her and you know, worked with her to make sure that we have the Mental Health Act passed. So once the Mental Health Act passed, uh, when I talk to doctors, they tell me that they're actually uh, surveying more. So if you survey more, you're going to have more cases. So this is actually a good thing. The more awareness is a good thing. Okay, this is the chromosome I was telling you about, chromosome 3P2520. This is, you can Google everything I say. This one has been implicated in depression. So somehow um, people who are depressed have something, have some, a weird, uh, something wrong with this certain chromosome. So there is a genetic component. Okay, so sometimes I will have to comfort parents. They, they, are, they are probably maybe some of the best parents who are trying everything they can. And yet, bakit depressed pa rin? So tinatanong ko, ma'am, ikaw, are you also depressed? Sabi niya, yes. So sabi ko, yan pala. So you know, it, it's, even if some of the parents have the best if intentions, sometimes because of genetics, there's nothing much we can do except we will try to ensure that the environment is positive. So that even if there is a genetic risk for depression, the kid will be helped and will not manifest major depression. So that's one. So genetics, there is genetics, but genetics is 40%. 60% is still the environment. The worst things would be my genetic, because the environment is not okay. That is a recipe for disaster. So parents, don't be too hard on yourselves, but also know that you have a responsibility to ensure that you yourself first, your children cannot have good mental health if you don't have. That's one big thing. Okay, so if you're suffering from a lot of stuff and, and projecting it out on the family, how can you expect your kids to cope with you yourself? So in short, for yourselves, please seek help. That is one of the requests of my Judenites. Mom, please tell the parents when you talk to them that if they're having problems, they also have to seek help. Mom, I'm okay with going to the psychologist, but my father said over his dead body. Ano ba yan, tatay? Come on. What do you mean over your dead body? You, you have to seek help, and I'm going to say this. For the parents listening now, if you know that you're depressed, if you know you're extremely anxious, you have to seek help. Fine. Not just for yourself, but I'm going to tell you this. You have to seek help, please. I'm begging you. For the sake of your children, you have to get well for the sake of your kids. It is affecting their learning. It is affecting their grades. It is affecting their life. They're, they're, they're being screwed up. You know, they're, they're mistrusting relationships. They, they're, they're, and problem. problema. So parents, if you have problems, you have to be brave enough and open enough to seek help. There is no stigma in therapy. I will 
go into that part again later. Social media is a big thing. So there's nothing much we can do about genetics. We're born with it. Social media, yes. Let's use social media wisely. My students talk about frenemies. Even the term itself is, is a, a term coined by the millennials. And this, my students now are no longer millennials. The parents, many of you listening now, you're actually millennials. The kids I have now in college are Gen Z. And the ones in, uh, in the grade school are the generation alpha. So iba, iba na yung ano. Iba differences and similarities there. But the frenemies is coined by millennials, which the Gen Z have embraced. Look, even, look, at, look at even that term. Can you imagine how a child feels if she cannot trust anyone? That the friend she thinks is a friend is actually a frenemy. That, that one is scary. That, that the social mistrust and the isolation is a bit scary. Toxic competition is also their term. The bad thing about social media, this one is called, this is such a big phenomenon that many researchers have uh, studied it. It's called Facebook envy. So many times, many of my most depressed students tell me, mom, I'm such a loser. You know, everybody else is doing so much. I said, how do you know they're doing so much? Mom, look at their Facebook post. This is before the pandemic. They have been to Paris, you know, they're eating this nice food. And here I am, I don't have enough money to do this. I said, do you really, really believe that the people who post these things have a perfect life. But mom, I cannot go to Paris. Mom, I cannot, I cannot afford this restaurant, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I said, my God, I said, you know, people's lives. I said, when people post, they normally post two things. First, they post the things that make them look good. Okay, so we know that many young people, even possibly parents, you will go through even taking a selfie. Go through many angles, you know, your best angle. Yan palang malina. You know, nobody even, practically nobody posts something which is negative about them. No one. Everything, everybody posts something positive about them, which is not bad. Except other people who are depressed and lonely and anxious will look at these people and they think they have perfect lives and then they feel they're such a loser, which is their term. Lahat ng ginagawa ko mali, mom, I might as well just die. So these are frequent stuff. So social media, you know, just, just use it for your marketing, for your company. Don't even, even the likes. My students actually lose sleep if their friends don't like their posts. I said, my God, wala talaga yung ginagawa sa buhay if you have to lose sleep. Who cares about the number of likes? I said, these are people you don't know. Why do you care? But they care. That's a bit bad thing. They care. So parents, one way we can do this, especially adolescents, because adolescents are very, very self-conscious and identity formation and all that. Uh, parents and um, counselors, please um, raise your kids to be grounded. Please raise your kids to know that being a child of God and being your child is enough. They do not have to prove themselves. That is something we call it unconditional love. Yes, we want children to do well. I have high expectations of my students, which means I would give F if they deserve it. But knock on wood, even those I give Fs to, they still talk to me today. So, you know, they would tell me, mom, I know I should have studied more. I said, yeah, you should have studied more, mom, because I was getting it. So they have excuses, but in the end, they still talk to me because they know that even if they do not do well in class, I still value them as a person. And that is what they need to know from parents. Okay? So if parents keep on harping about grades, which is fine because so do I, I tell my students, I'm not happy with an F or a D. I need you to go for at least a B. So some of them succeed, some of them don't. But, but I care for them. And they know they can talk to me. For parents, kasi minsan, mahirap eh. Um, because we keep on nagging our children to do good grades for some reasons which may not be very good, like competition. My students call it bragging rights of parents to other parents. Uh, many of the students actually feel that the parents do not care for them unless they get high marks. When they say that, I tell them, ano ba kayo? I said, your parents love you. So yung sinasabi ko lagi sa kanila is, your parents love you. That is why they nag you. 
if they do not love you, they will not even care and they won't even talk to you and they wouldn't care what grades you get. So I will say that. So when I talk to students, I defend you. But now when I talk to you, I have to defend them. So you have to meet in between somehow. I know you love them. I'm a parent. I know you want them to do their best. So do I. But for them to do their best, we have to raise them in a way that they can do their best. So I will go into that later. We'll talk about growth mindset, grit. So there are ways to help them do well, even in the pandemic. I have students who are doing very well in the pandemic, but majority of them are not. And the biggest factor there now would be parenting. We'll go into that. Harmful shows. This is one show I really, I really dislike, 13 Reasons Why. I never even finished it. My students gave me, of course, uh, copies of this one. I don't even want to, I don't even want to start it. Parents, uh, if you're, mostly it's women who watch this. Many of the guys don't, thank God. Uh, but just have a conversation with your kids if they watch this. If they watch this, you have to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with them now. Three years ago, this was one of the most watched series on Netflix. Right now, I'm so happy. According to my students, nobody really watches this as much, but we don't know. It's still there in Netflix and everybody's on Netflix now. So um, very quickly, why I don't like this show. This is based on the book, which my students lent me. I also don't want to read it. Uh, 13 Reasons Why is about this American high school girl who actually killed herself by slashing her wrist in the bathtub. Yes, it is graphic, so I'm just warning you. And then, you know, that, that is common. But what I do not like about this show is before she died, she actually had several videos um, sent to her closest friends, okay, accusing them of causing her death. That's what I hate. So she said her best friend you know, betrayed her, her boyfriend betrayed her, her teacher betrayed her, her parents betrayed her. What the, I, that is such a twisted, yucky show. I don't even know why it's, it's on air. Um, certain countries have banned it. I was talking to psychologists internationally, they have banned the show. But I tell them if you ban it, the students are still, are, lalo na, if you ban something, people are going to watch it. I said, we cannot ban, it's out there. The easiest thing would be, if your kids are watching it, you should have a, a communication with them. I actually spent before in, in 2016, 2017, when the show was really at its height, I would spend my precious class time in mathematics and psychology and science just to talk about the show because the students would raise the topic and ask me for, for my comments. And my answer is always, they would say, mom, who is, the, why, who is the one responsible for her death? And then they would have a debate. Mom, you know, it's the friend, it's the boyfriend. I said, my God. I said, I said it's very clear. Mom, see, are you responsible? I said, the one responsible for her death is herself. I said, she's the one who killed herself. But mom, she wouldn't kill herself if the boyfriend, you know, did not cheat. I said, my God, you know, you're actually blaming other people for your actions. Ganun na yung mentality. Nakakatakot. So this show is scary. So please, if your kids watch it, do not go off the rails. Have a discussion with them and then make sure they understand in the end that the choice to end her life, the main character, that the choice to end her life is hers and that the fault lies with her. Okay, she cannot blame her parents for being distant. The parents were working. She cannot blame the teacher for not because the teacher was busy. Yes, perhaps these ones made her feel worse. That's true. Okay, the betrayal by everybody made her feel worse. But the real, real fault lies with the child. So that one has to be. We cannot have students. The bad thing with this one is in the U.S., when this show aired, several copycat suicides came. So several students actually killed themselves also in the same manner and left copies blaming their loved ones. Look at the sorrow and the havoc it causes among everyone. And what kind of students are these? Narcissistic. Narcissistic, lack of great coping. I mean, they're, they're dead and they're accusing people of killing them. So it, it's, ay nako, iba na, iba na yung mentality talaga. So let's be, let's be, just because something is on Netflix and yes, I'm on Netflix, doesn't mean it's a good show. Okay, so look at websites and see, aren't these shows okay or not? Some shows are not, seriously, they're not. Perceived rejection from loved ones and lack of grit. So wala tayong magawa sa genetics. Wala tayong magawa sa harmful shows except talk to them about it. 
but we can control social media. Perceive rejection, we try to caution them and say, you know, if you break up, it's not the end of the world. And we try to just be there for them. So all of us will have a breakup. All of us will have our heart broken. And we need to learn how to cope. The lack of grit, though, is something we can do something about. Lots of, uh, so parenting, fear of failure is one thing, and the instant gratification. These are things we can do something about. Okay. These are myths on suicide. They are not true. People who talk about suicide don't do it. Sadly, they do. So if your child talks about suicide, do not say overacting or OA, hindi, or kulang sa pansin, hindi. That is a cry for help. Somebody says, talk suicide. You know, you have to put everything down. I don't care if you're in the Zoom meeting. I don't care if you're, you're so busy. You have to put everything down and talk to your child. Listen first. Actually, listen to your child first before you talk. Suicidal people are fully intent on dying. Actually, no. I've talked to several students who attempted suicide, who thankfully attempted but did not succeed. So when we talk about it, we look at research, no. They actually tell me, mom, I don't really want to die. So I will tell them, why did you attempt to jump? Mom, I just want to end the pain. That is different. Okay, so ending the pain is different from wanting to die. So ganito na, we're logical people. If they tell me they want to end the pain, my job now will be to find ways for them to cope with the situation so that the pain is less. So that is the way you should reframe rather than blaming them for wanting to die. So you should do it in a more proactive manner. Okay? People who make suicide attempts are only looking for attention. Some of them, yes, but so what? Yes, they need attention, but so what? Okay, so we still give them the attention they need. Talking about suicide puts the thought into people's heads. That's not true. That's one of the biggest things, and this is a very Chinese uh, myth. Let's not talk about it, you know, our parents would say. Because if you talk about it, everybody will do it. That's not true. Actually, many of the students say when they have a safe space to talk about it, they feel so much better because they know they are not alone. Yan yon. Many of them, countless students have told me, Mom, akala ko I'm the only one who feels this way. Hindi pala. So they feel a sense of relief. So talking about it, pero don't just talk about it. Ha. Talk about it and brainstorm ways to cope with life. Hindi lang, you know, talking about it. So yes, let them air out, but afterwards put them on suggest ways for them to deal with the problem in a way that doesn't make them end their life. So how to deal with problems, how to be a problem solver, that is the one, okay, which is the, the whole key to this whole thing. Uh, many people also say, these, these are parents, and I don't know where they get it. They say, you know, it is okay for my child to do gaming. Because if he doesn't do gaming, he might kill himself. I said, what? I mean, that's not, that's not even logical. So they sabi nila, okay na, doctora, alam mo yung gaming niya, and the gaming is 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. I said, well, that's not okay. 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. gaming, 12 hours of gaming is not okay. Doktora, kasi if I try to stop him, sisigaw sa atin, eh, sabihin niya, mamamatay siya. Okay, parents, you know, kung ganyan lang, emotional blackmail, you have, whether the child likes it or not, he, this this particular kid I have in mind, and thank God this is not the same, not, not a Judenite, this is another school. Um, I said, you know, you're the parent. You know, your, your kid is 19 years old. Yep, he can vote, he can, he can have sex, whatever but he's living under your roof. I said 3 p.m. 3 p. to 3 a.m. gaming for two to three months and all his grades are F. I said, do you think that's okay? And you let him do it because or else he will threaten to kill himself. I said, that one, first thing you have to do, I told the parent, see a psychiatrist, ASAP. Medication and therapy again. The only thing I'm happy to tell you about, the kid is alive today. Not very happy with me because I forced him to, to get help, but he's alive. So... See Lifeline. Um, Lifeline is a book we did. Uh, later, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll show you the book because many of the Ateneo parents have it, and um, we teachers are so worried about students killing themselves. There's a rush of, of you know things like that. That the vice president of the Loyola schools, um, Dr. Mardu Vilches, ensured that every single department in Ateneo has a copy of this. So this is our Bible. Uh, and uh, later I'll show you the slide of that one. These are actual quotations from people who are suicidal. 
So if they say something like this, these are all warning signs. I think how easy this would be just to, that it will all be over. In ito, nako, very, very, ano to, these are from the, 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 the most intelligent people. And ito, this is already a warning sign. Do you really believe suicide is a sin? What if by dying we do people a favor because they don't have to take care of us anymore? Or if we were bad people, aren't we doing society a big favor? So they do rationalization, at they, do, they say many things, but that is a warning sign. Everything's great, I'm going to a better place is scary. If they say they're going to a better place, that's not good. What's the point of going on? I'll just keep failing in any way. This is learned helplessness, also not good. And of course, if they say this. So these are examples. Self-harm. Cutting is the most prominent. So they, right now, uh, because we're doing things on Zoom, hindi ko masyadong makita, but before, they would do cutting on the arms. Okay? They would, and then they would come to school with, with, uh, with sweaters. So sometimes I would tell them, roll up your sleeves. Like, ko, minsan yung cuts infected pa. Sabi ko, mga bata talaga. Of course, the parents know nothing about this. Pinching themselves, talaga yung pinching nila, dumudugo na. They're hitting, um, this is hitting themselves. So they're banging their heads against the wall. They're pulling it. I've seen students who are actually bowed on top. You know, they have a hat. I will tell them to take out the hat in the classroom. When they take it out, naku, my, my bald patches, they pull out their hair. That's also self-harm. Binging, purging, starving, banging head. Why do they harm themselves? Uh, according to psychologists and the students, they want to reduce stress. They are stressed out. So they actually hurt themselves. I know it is weird. I said, oh my God, when I look at the infected cuts, so I tell them to go to the clinic at once. I said, ah, sakit, sakit ito, in my infection na. I said, ha, ha, why do you do it? Mom, kasi I'm so stressed out. I said, but if you cut yourselves, you're gonna be, you're gonna be more stressed out. Mom, even if there's the pain, parang, it makes me, at least I focus on the pain in my arm rather than I focus on the pain in my life. This is something weird. It, it doesn't make sense to rational people, but remember, if they have mental health issues, their rationality is only 50%. And they resolve interpersonal difficulties. Sometimes they cut themselves to make the boyfriend or the girlfriend feel guilty sometimes. And compensate for the perceived wronging. Oh, okay, I'll cut myself. I hate my parents. I hate my teachers. I'll cut myself. Okay. But the sense of relief they have is only temporary. So many times, if I see students who are doing self-harm, nasa watch list na namin yan. Kasi baka, you know, kung self-harm, they will do the ultimate self-harm. They will just end it. Do, stay calm. Parents, stay calm even if you are horrified. Keep your own emotions in check. I'm sorry you are the parent. You will make it worse if you make drama. Focus on the child's feelings and not your own. This is about your child. This is not about you. Okay? So it's focusing on other people. Do not panic or be overly reactive. So do not say things, oh my God, what did you do? Just take a deep breath and say, Anak, let's talk. I know it's very difficult. It may take practice. Sometimes I conduct practice sessions, communication sessions with certain parents in very small groups because they don't know how to communicate with their kids. Okay, so you sometimes, if you feel you will have to, ju just don't make things worse. Show empathy, openness to listen, acknowledge. That must be hard for you. Do not say you're committing a sin. Do not say that. Okay, because we are, we're not God. We don't know. Jesus is merciful. We don't know. Okay. And do not threaten. If you don't stop overacting, ako ang daming parents. If you don't stop overacting, if you don't stop crying, if you don't stop being KSP, I won't get the iPad. Lako, that makes it worse. Um, gather useful information. Okay? So, you have to, you want to prevent this. How does a child harm herself? If it's with a knife or an ano, then make sure she doesn't have access to knives. In Ateneo, there was one time I was very worried because I had a class where six people were harming themselves. And I told them, nagalit sila. Kasi I told them, you know, guys, I want you to show me what you have in your in your backpack. And then I found out there was some yung, yung paper cutter. Sabi ko alam mo, this is a psychology class, hindi to art class. Why are you bringing a paper cutter to school? I said you are a psychology major. As far as I know, no kaya. Mom, wala because I might need it for something. Wala. Sabi ko so no. I said I will not allow the paper cutter in my class. Sometimes they use that to do. So yun, yung ganon. Um, but again, I'm the teacher. It's sometimes easier for me to do this. Kung parent, pero kung parent, lalo na, diba? you should know if your child is cutting it yourself. And yet, kids are very, 
If they don't want us to know something, we probably might not know about it until it's too late. There's so many, um, what breaks my heart is there were some suicides we did not know about uh, until Abarcada would phone us in the middle of the night and say, Nako, you know, meron ng suicide goodbye note on Facebook. Wala na, tumalun na. So we, so yes, we have lost kids that way. So what makes a child engage in self-injury? So we, we, we have to gather the information. What causes this? Never end the conversation if you doubt that the child, if you feel the child will continue. Um, my son has actually seen this because my son was doing AJSS in Ateneo uh, before. And his class ended at, I think, 2, 3, 2 p.m. And, you know, my, my class ended at 3 p.m. So we were supposed to go back at 3 p.m. But I had students seeing me, and I think we ended at 8 p.m. Because I will not stop unless I'm certain that the child will not harm herself. So kahit na wala nang tao on campus, kahit na pagod na pagod na ako, because I'm not certain, they will not, natatakot ako kung umalis ako, they will do something. So I had to talk with them until 8 p.m. until they promised me they will not harm themselves. I think na pagod na rin. And they told me, mom, I said, it's parang ganon. And then I, I left. So parents, if I can do that, lalo na kayo, do not, do not stop and do not lose hope. As long as the child is still alive, you have a responsibility to keep the child alive. So do not stop a conversation dangling. Do not leave a conversation dangling. Even if you have so many other things to do, nothing is more precious than saving a life. So never leave a conversation dangling. So if you're still not sure the kid will do it or not, if you're not sure, trust your God. Okay? If you're not sure, you have to call on someone for help. Call the St. Jude Guidance Counselor. Call a fellow parent. Call a trusted adult the child likes. If you have a problem with your own teenager, then who is the teenager your child talks to? Maybe it's an uncle. Maybe it's an aunt. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's a priest. But you cannot stop it because the moment you stop it, the guilt you will feel is going to be horrible and you yourself will have mental health issues. Seek help at once of a professional. Any self-harm, you have to seek help. Okay? And I, I, I've stopped doing it. There's so many. I, I cannot help you. if I used to do a practice on this one, but I have so many cases now in the school I teach. So I cannot... I cannot have more cases on this one. Um, but I know St. Jude has resources. The book I will tell you about later, we have resources at the back. Take the matter seriously. Even a pet can trigger something. Take the loss. You know, there's no stigma. It is not, we are not crazy. Uh, before I can be a clinical psychologist, I have to undergo therapy with a trusted professional for six months. Because if I myself were not rational, how can I help other people? Um, we have two very respected priests listening to us now. I'm very, I'm, I'm sure they will also tell you, because this is what the Jesuit said, that the priests, before they become a priest, they have spiritual confessors, which is also a therapist for them. So I'm a psychologist. The priests are priests. You know, these are respected professions. So if we ourselves have undergone therapy, anyone can. It doesn't mean you're crazy. Okay, if you have a problem you cannot solve, you just want somebody to talk to, just go to a therapist. There's, there's no stigma. We, can, we don't have to suffer alone. Um, please don't leave the person alone. Imminent risk. If there's imminent risk, you have to call the ER, the nearest hospital. What is imminent risk? Ito na. Okay. Yung suicidal thoughts and feelings, intentions, pwede pa. Imminent risk. Natatakot na ako rito. Is there a detailed plan? The students, which I do not leave alone, are students, when I, I would ask them straight, but they'll, they'll, there's a big thing about how worthless they are, how bad life is, and they just want to end the pain. So usually that's how we start. Then in the middle of it, I will tell them, tell me, if you're going to end your life, well, how would you do it? If they have a detailed plan. So they will say, know, there's a box of pills in my mom's cabinet, it is going to and all I have to do, po ang detalya na, alam na nila yung gagawin nila, imminent risk na yan. If they're a bit vague, then maybe it's, there's still time. But I'm also not happy. Because there's a detailed plan. If the method is available, okay? if, if they say that I will get a gun, and they've said that, 
I would say, really? Uh, no, I said, but guns, you cannot, oh, you know, my dad has a gun. Ay, nako, natatakot na ako doon. Diba? So, if you know that there is a method available, you know, and if there's a time to commit suicide, they will actually say, you know, I plan to do it in the weekend. I plan to do it over Christmas. I plan, yung ganyan. And how great. So, that's imminent risk. What to say or do. Suppose you're not yet at imminent risk. Suppose you're now getting worried because I'm telling you, I'm telling you the worst possible case. Later on, it will be better. Point out observations regarding changes in behavior. Do not make accusations. Do not say this. This is what many parents say. This is according to the Judaizer. They'll say, the parents will tell them, you're so lazy. You know, the pandemic has been March pa. Wala kang ginagawa. You're always doing games. You know, you're so lazy and you do not say that. Do, do, do not say, do not accuse. What should you do? You should go with facts. Go with what you see. So instead of saying, you're so lazy while you're playing games all the time, you can say, I notice that it looks as if you have not been doing your homework. Yon, puede pa. Okay, I'm worried about you. What's going on? So go with the facts. So first, make it factual based. What do you see them doing? Rather than accusing them. Pagkatapos niyan, you assess the risk. Okay, so if you say, this is a real conversation I had. I noticed uh, with, with a parent. So this is what the parent did. I noticed you've been crying a lot for a week. I'm worried about you. What's going on? So parang, you know, the, then the kid started saying, she's overwhelmed, anxiety pala, ganyan, ganyan. And the parent is helping her with that. Sometimes you have to assess risk. This is also from a parent. The parent was crying, you know, um, and they told me this is what, your sister says you're saying goodbye to her. Out of the blue, if they say goodbye or they suddenly say thank you, that's a scary one. Why would they do that? You know? So if you say that, direct question na. Okay? Why are you saying goodbye? What do you have in mind? Again. Seek professional help ASAP. Again, professional help would be therapy, psychologist, though. medication, psychiatrist. Though. This is a PhD. This is an MD. For not serious cases, PhD might be okay. For serious cases, many of the cases I handle, I tell the parents, I will not handle the child unless the child is already on medication because nothing I say is going to work. And I work with a lot of uh, medical city, St. Luke's um, psychiatrists. So meron na siyang medication, mas, mas stable na, then we do therapy. Um, resources in life. If the risk is imminent, do not leave any child on their own. Okay, you get somebody else to help. This is the book I was telling you about. We... The warning signs. So everything I'm telling you today are here. What to say and what to, what to say and do, what not to say and do. There are scripts. My parents say we don't know what to say. The scripts we change the names, but those are actual scripts. We have scripts for parents whose kids attempted suicide. Scripts for parents whose kids are thinking of doing it for teachers, etc. So what to say, what not to say, and we discuss depression, self harm, anxiety, grief, natural disasters. We have resources at the back, which are the which hospitals and which clinics can you call up if you are having difficulty? So, and many parents, um, I have to just include this, many parents say, where can we get it? In this pandemic, Anvil Publishing, which uh, has it as an ebook, or you can get it as a printed book. They will deliver to you now within a week. So just go to Anvil Publishing, look for my name, and then just look at the books. Okay. Restate what the student says. So if you're already listening and you already made the observation, first you have to restate. That's something we always forget. Because the, the student usually crying, my anxious, and tired, our emotions are also very, very high. So we have to ensure that we really get what they're saying. For instance, <clears throat> this was a student uh, of another teacher. My students normally don't cheat. Of another teacher, and this student is suicidal. So, nag cheating siya, galit na galit yung kaibigan ko, naguro, and you know, asked my help. So, this is so I was talking to the student, the student was crying for like crying and crying because the student was caught cheating. So, you know, sinabi niya, I cheated because so hindi ko maintindihan bakit siya nag cheat. Kasi okay naman siya. In fact, teens listers tong batang to. So, hindi ko maintindihan bakit siya nag cheating. So finally, you know, sinabi niya, I cheated because I need the If I get low in the test, my parents would kill me. So, you know, you, you, you can't let it, you know, we know the parents won't kill them. But this is the way they talk. So you have to reflect, what is the person trying to say here? Okay, so this is what I actually said. So this is me. 
So I said, okay, not getting a perfect grade seems to be an issue for you and your family. Want to talk about it? I have to rephrase what he said. Because if I just said, ano ba yan? Yung, uh, ito yung hindi ko pwedeng sabihin. Ano ba yan? Mga parents mo naman, ano ba yan? I cannot. If I do that, he will agree with me, but I cannot help him. So I have to rephrase what the student is trying to say. So I rephrased it, and yes, he talked about it. Ang tagal namin, grabe. So it, it wasn't just one session. I think it was like 10 sessions. I now know his whole life. So, I'm like, and this is one of the top students. So meron siya disciplinary case, suspended, zero in the test, etc. So actively listen. First, refrain from giving advice. I cannot refrain from, hindi ko pwedeng sabihin, don't cheat. Of course, you shouldn't cheat. But that's not, if that's the first thing I say, he will not open up. So, you have to actively listen. Refrain from giving, you, I know you want to give advice. All of us want to give advice. Not yet. We first have to listen. After you listen, you, refer, you reflect. Okay, you listen, they say many things, then you restate. Then, then when you restate and they feel safe, you know they're going to ask for advice. I have so many emails from students, even today, even just today, even before this talk. Nako, I just checked my ano, tatlong, tatlo, bagong advice. Mom, I want to go to grad school. Mom, uh, they, they ask for advice. So many parents tell me, ano ba yan? The, the, our kids never ask, ask for anything. Oh my God, my students ask me for advice every single day. So they will ask advice. Sometimes they ask for too much. Like, ano ba yan? Just Google. You ask for everything. You know, but they, if they feel safe, they will ask. When they ask, not before, but when they ask, then we advise. We suggest alternative modes of action. Instead of killing yourself, I would say, have developed better study habits. Minsan. Instead of yelling at your parents, learn to communicate with them. Ganon, okay? Challenge their self-defeating thoughts. They will say, World walang kwenta. I'd say, really? Wala kang kwenta? Seriously? Ganon. You, you challenge them. But this is afterwards. And help them develop better coping skills. Let's now go to anxiety. This is now not as bad. Natapos ka na yung I have to start with suicide because that's the one which is life or death. Anxiety, not as much. So this one, it's, I promise you, this won't be as bad now. Anxiety. This is the one on the rise in this pandemic. They worry about everything. Anxiety is also partly genetic. Obsessive compulsive. They're like always obsessed with something, their compulsion, excessive fear. We're all going to die. The pandemic will never end. Ako. They say many times it's their mothers who have this social anxiety. You know, we're doing already classes online, which is supposed to reduce social anxiety, but many students still don't want to talk. And they're the ones I'm worried about. Majority of students talk, but some students are shy. And I would have to say this. Many Judenites are shy. I'm not saying they have social anxiety, but somehow they don't talk as much. Um, sometimes, and I would have to call on them. So this is maybe one general. There's something about, uh, they, they're very good students. They're usually Judenites are more diligent than students from other schools. They're quite respectful. So I actually like my Judenite uh, students. Um, but they're quite shy. And they tell me they have been shy even in grade school or high school. So perhaps a little bit of social confidence. You know, parang they don't, and they don't, they, they, they are especially shy about speaking in Filipino. They tell me they never recite in Filipino classes. So perhaps, you know, it feed back to your Filipino um, teachers. Because if you want to go to Ateneo, we still have a lot of Filipino classes. I know La Salle and UP don't have a lot. We have a lot of Filipino classes. So... And, and right now, oral exams, many of us are giving oral exams. They have to recite. Okay, post-traumatic stress disorder. This is uh, from parents. How to deal with anxiety in school. This is not as worrisome. Parents worry about it. Students worry about it. I'm not as worried because this is not so much life or death. Nobody really kills themselves over one bad grade. They will gripe and complain, but usually the grades are not the reason for the there, there are underlying reasons, but there are anxiety grades there. So bullying is a big thing. Uh, suggest strategies. I'm so happy that uh, this is just the first in the series because in my next talk, which I think is in two weeks, I think, um, I will focus on strategies for online learning. So hindi na masyadong mental health. Okay, so I will talk about all these. And this one can minimize anxiety. 
the most important thing for the pandemic right now would be students need to do independent learning. Yan na. Those who can do independent learning, they're doing well. I, I have stories of students who are doing well. Majority of students, though, ironically, from the wealthier, which is upper middle class and upper class, they're the ones who cannot cope. My scholars can cope better. The ones in the public schools, magaling sila in this pandemic. Kahit na pangit yung Wi-Fi, their grades are better, their mental health is better. The ones who are not coping very well, sadly, are from the private schools. Because, because everything has been done for them. They have never learned to study on their own. Ngayon, they have to study on their own. Nahihirapan sila. So this one is so important, but I'm going to focus on this one in two weeks' time. I'm not sure if everybody will be listening, so um, just in case, Anvil begged me to do this because you are the 69th school I have given talks to. And uh, this is my newest book, and you are the first group. This one, we just finalized it yesterday. Um, and it's raising independent learners. So we have tips on how to do online and offline. This is not so much mental health. This will be practical strategies on learning. And I'm very happy to tell you, St. Jude, that Anvil says we can invite you. This time, they're going to do it Facebook live stream. In my first talk with Anvil, they had to turn away 500 parents because the Zoom room was only 1,000 capacity. But right now, we don't want to turn away anyone. So instead of doing Zoom, we're going to do Facebook Live. This is on November 21. Sorry, all of you are invited uh, if you want. I'm going to give a short talk on, again, how to raise independent learners. Um, and you don't have to register, I think, this time. Thank God. So, yeah, so if, in case you want to join us. Um, for study habits, I'll just quickly do this. Um, many of the study habits which have helped my students are in this book, especially in this one and in this one. They're all in Android. Okay. How do we do anxiety? Brief. Look at worries and alternative ways. We have to exercise. And it's aerobic exercise, more than an aerobic exercise. Endorphins will raise our mood. Walking. Even suppose you say it's too dangerous to walk outside. Many of my students say they dance inside the room. You do not, have, you do not need a big place. Sana if you can walk outside better. Okay, pero ngayon, what quarantine is so relaxed. I think you can walk outside. Just be very careful and be protective gear. But dancing inside the room has helped many of my students. They do Zumba inside the room. They do whatever it is. You have to sustain it to up the endorphins. Seek nature, even online. Um, look at this one. This is one of my favorites. So if sometimes I cannot go outside to walk, then even look at us. When we look at this, look at the greenery of this one. Our heart rate goes down. Our anxiety level also goes down. So if we can, walking in the park in the open air is good. We cannot at least let our screen savers be nature, beach, and forest are the best ones. Use social media judiciously. Connect with others face-to-face. -face. Uh, right now, because of the, I know we cannot really, we cannot really, you know, make beso beso, hug our, our friends. But what I tell my students to do now will be you have to ensure that when you, what you do online is important. So I tell them for online, you only do a few things, only five things. First, you do online classes, no choice. The teacher is in Zoom, they have to do Zoom, so online classes. Second, you might be doing online exams, so you have to do that online for them. Third, I said, your teacher might want you to watch videos. So you have to do online, go videos there. But there are many things you don't have to do online. For instance, our LMS, Learning Management System, is Canvas. I put stuff on Canvas, but I always tell my students, do not stay online for hours reading what is there. You have to print screen and take it out and read it on, offline. So online is kumpila. You know, reserve online time. For the, for the things you really have to do online. Some of the, the and then I'll just finish the online thing. Students, especially our middle school and high school, they need to connect with friends. And vibrating is not enough. They have to see their friends' faces. So I actually encourage my students to do Zoom barcada party. Somebody's having a birthday, everybody's on Zoom, and they just eat the same food. You know, they will have 
it's the same food delivered, they need the social um, interaction. So that one is also online. So yung mga reading, yung, yung mga hindi talaga pwedeng gawin or not so good would be you read web pages online, you read the PDFs online, print them out. I will talk about that more on uh, in two weeks' time. Limit all this. Sleep is so important. Not just the quantity, it's eight hours kung kaya, but the quality of sleep. And one thing I don't like about gadgets is my students tell me, yes, sometimes they sleep 10 hours down. So, ano ba yan? Sobra naman, 10 hours. But then they say they wake up four or five times a night. That's not good. 10 hours sleep with waking up four to five times because you, you, you know why they wake up. Because their iPhones ping and then they wake up. That's horrible. So the quality of sleep is also important. Gadgets off okay, or silent mode, something that will not, the blue light will also emitted by gadgets also interferes with the production of melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. Seek unconditional love for friends, from pets, from parents, and medications if you have to. Okay, for COVID, all of us are stressed out. And please do not attend webinars by people who say we have to avoid stress. We cannot avoid stress. Stress is here, whether we like it or not. So we have to manage stress. And fear is normal in the pandemic. In fact, if we're not anxious, it's not normal. Okay, there's a little bit of anxiety here. I, I haven't seen my son for physically for, you know, for, for months. And sometimes I worry about him. He's on his own in a foreign land. But I cannot let it paralyze me. So you calm your children, you calm yourself. Avoid obsessing about things beyond your control. Um, the US elections are coming up. You know, some of us may want you know, this person to win, but it's beyond our control. So let's even think about it. Focus on what we can do. So instead of things, or, you know, suppose you know, the, the way the pandemic is being handled, leaves a lot to be desired. But if we cannot do anything about it, let's just stop thinking about it and just focus on what we can do. So what can we do in our own sphere? We can hone our skills. I tell my students this, you can just, because the best thing you can do in this pandemic is to maximize your learning. Ganun na. I said, you don't have to be a hero. Just maximize your learning. Do well, learn as much as you can. Helping the frontliners, we care, I said, you know, and also care for your family. Do chores at home. Fact check chain messages from Viber. Many times, I don't have social media because 99% of what's being passed on social media, I think is false. Those are from studies. So I don't want to be rattled by what I see on Viber. So fact check. Okay? And then connect online rather than doing things on your own. So rather than watching Netflix on your own, which makes you more solitary, watch Netflix together with friends. Talk about it. Okay. Parents, let's just give teens a small ano. Um, they're not as rational as we would want them to be because they are ruled by their primitive parts, the amygdala. So let's just refrain from immediate blame. I will end with Asperger's. This is, this is a bit, okay, it's, it's on autism spectrum and many of the top students we know are high functioning Asperger's. There is no cure for this one, but there's no medication. This is also highly genetic. And it affects more males and females. It is mostly genetic. We're not sure about environmental, but the magazine Wired in 2001 calls it the Silicon Valley Syndrome. And I actually see it. Uh, there are a lot of Asperger students now, especially in the science courses, in ME, in science, in computer science. Marami sa kanilang gano. I will, this is the geek syndrome I was telling you about, but this is Wired. And it says autism and its milder cousin, Asperger's, is surging among the children of Silicon Valley, our math and tech genes to blame. Um, yes, several of the Judaites are Asperger's. They are very good people and they are, some of them graduated with honors from Ateneo. But yes, they're Asperger's. So what are the challenges? They lack understanding of social subtleties. Some people find them odd. Think of Sheldon Cooper in Big Bang Theory. That is extreme Asperger's. Matalino, matalino, pero odd, eccentric. Wala siyang alam sa social skills. Yan yon. Okay, so lagging computer lang rather than talking. When they talk to you, they cannot meet your eyes or they cannot, they're not confident. They're always looking down. They don't dare talk. So yun, yun, ganon, yun yung Asperger's. They sometimes speak bluntly. There's abnormal voice inflection. You know, sometimes they will, it's, it's, you will know it. If you feel there's a bit off, then there's something there. They have obsessive and narrowly defined interests. One time in a class of uh, science people, 
they were pretty much Asperger's na hirapan ako until I started talking about Star Trek. And I'm a Star Trek fan. I once taught a course on Star Trek. And to my happiness, half the class love Star Trek. So my God, parang ako, I know the general Star Trek. Nako, they started telling me about, um, you know, the Enterprise and, and, and the machines and then the, the, the blueprints, the layout. Hindi ko alam lahat yon. But they're Asperger, so they really are obsessive about it. So they, they can even speak in Klingon, which I cannot. So parang very narrow, very, very, I think you get what I mean. So marami sa kanila ganun na. Uh, they find it hard to adjust to new situations. They are usually, usually Asperger's are very bad with PE. So they're not good with running. They're not good with basketball. They're, it's, it's motor movements. And they prefer interacting with screen rather than real life. Um, they are good friends and they're seated beside each other. Normally, we will just talk to each other. Sila hindi. They will just, magkatabi na, they will talk to each other through the screen rather than talking to each other. And when I ask them why, ma'am, it's more comfortable talking in the screen. I don't want to see his face. As per journal. So, you know, the, the social cues, subtleties, takot na takot lahat, a lot of anxiety, uh, but very bright. Or, if not very bright, above average intelligence. They normally do well in school because they're very obsessive compulsive also. Uh, but, which normally Asperger's are okay. Natatakot lang ako sa Asperger's is under stress, they will revert to inappropriate behavior. And they will become aggressive and frustrated. Uh, they, will, they will act like a child. Again, think of Sheldon Cooper if he doesn't get what he wants. So depression occurs in many Asperger adolescents. I'm not as worried about the Asperger. I'm worried about the depression aspect. Why am I worried about this? Because if you're already Asperger's, which means you don't have many social skills, Asperger's ka na to start with it. So ta- medyo wala ka nang, you, know, you cannot really cope socially na. And then depression ka pa. That many of the suicidal people we have have both, are both Aspies with high marks, Good in math, very bad in philosophy. Good in science, very bad in Filipino. You know, in ganon. And they want, they're not happy. And people find them weird. So socially, they're not the most popular students. And so marami sa kanila feel they cannot cope. Of course, they cannot cope because they don't have social skill. Eh. So what can we do? When I have Asperger students, I tell them I would have lots of group work. Um, instead of having them recite in a class of 40 to 50 people, I will group them into groups of five to six and they will recite with fewer people just so they can feel less anxiety about socially saying something. And I have to explain carefully and repeat what I mean. Okay, let me. The easiest way is to just tell you cuento about Asperger students. And this one is a Filipino-Chinese student. Okay. Um, I did not know. This was the first day of class. I did not know that he was Asperger's. I didn't know. First day of class. This is pre-pandemic. So that's a class, eh? math class. And I was already, on the first day, I already teach. So I was doing math equations, you know, polynomials on the board. And suddenly, shockingly, one girl said, Mom, um, he is so mean. M-E-A-N. He is so mean. And she started, bigla na lang, I was doing math, sumigaw siya, di ko siya kilala, first day. He's so mean. And of course, I turned around. And I saw this girl, who's not Chinese, about to cry, and she was pointing at her seatmate, who looks very Chinese. So this never happened to me before. I said, what the heck is this one? So she said, what do you mean he's so mean? Which is a wrong thing to do. I shouldn't have said that. But you know, nagulat ako. I said, what do you mean? And, she, and she, she started crying. I can't believe it. She started, tears were coming out. The entire class was shocked because most of them were listening to me. They did not know what was happening. First day pa lang, takot ako pa sila. So she started crying and she kind of saying, he's so mean, he's so mean. So I decided I have to get control of the situation. So I said, okay, class, everyone, do the following exercises. So I wrote exercises, bilis na bilis ako like two exercises, and then I, I, I called this girl and this guy. I said, okay, let's go out to the corridor. So, lapas kami. Sabi ko, what is happening in the corridor? And then, sinabi niya, 
matatawa kayo rito ah okay but she was crying so i cannot laugh i said what why are you crying mom he is so mean crying to i said what do you mean she said mom he says i am fat mataba i wanted to laugh but you cannot laugh because she's she's crying so i asked him i said did you really say she's fat you have to get the facts he said yes i did i said why did you say she's fat i mean diba this is the first day hindi mo siya kilala and ito na sinabi niya because she asked me do i look fat of course i said and he said mom she looks fat so i said she's fat okay when he said that i said Dinerecho ko na. I said, have you ever been diagnosed with something? Ma'am, yes. I'm an aspie. Alam niya, asperger. So natuwa ako kasi it came from him. So I, I turned to the girl. I said, you know, he's an asperger's person. An asperger's person, they, you know, they, they actually are very blunt. They don't care about social skills, you know. I said, he does not mean anything by it, so please stop crying. He's not malicious. He's just telling the truth. But mom, I said, look, You ask him if you look fat. For him, he thinks you do. So he told you the truth. And she said, but he's so mean. I said, why do you even have to ask him if you look fat in the first place? But you know, ayoko na kasi ang gulo-gulo na tito and I have to go back to my class. So I said, okay, just know that he does not mean anything, but I don't think the two of you should sit beside each other. So pumasok na kaming tatlo. She stopped crying by then. This guy still did not know what was happening. He was Asperger's. He did not know what he did wrong. Because for him, it was not wrong. So ang ginawa ko na lang pumasok kami, I said, okay, you know, this girl remained in her seat. This guy, I said, you sit there. I made sure that yung katabi ng girl, isang girl na hindi magsasabi ng ganon. So this guy, I sat him with the guys who wouldn't care about his. So yun, that was how I managed it. So that was an aspi. So I knew na. Um, that's one funny thing. This one is not as funny. This one happened to a professor in the humanities and he was telling me. So he wanted He asked the class that they should, they're supposed to set up some readings for the day. So this Asperger's, whom he did not know was an Asperger's, went to the Xerox machine person and asked her to Xerox. And he asked her, what time should I come back for this one? What time will, you, will this be Xerox? And I said, 1 p.m. This Aspie guy who's very, very, you know, yeah, very, very straight, eh? very literal and very straight. So he went back at 1 p.m. And he said, okay, I'm back. I want to get and how much do I owe you? This is the bad thing. The Xerox lady had so much to do. So she did not even start yet on the Xerox scene. So she said to the guy, I'm sorry, can you please come back at 4 p.m. Because there's a lot. Normally, if that's okay, I'm going to tell you what's going on here. This guy threw a tantrum. Talagang grabe, in front of everybody, he started shouting. He said, But you said it's 1 p.m. You said you're a liar. Da, da, da. Talagang, nag, nagwala talaga. Campus security had to be brought in. You know, talagang galit na galit na siya. Takot na takot yung Xerox lady. Sinabi ng Xerox lady, sige, sige, sige. I, I will Xerox your, ano now, I will Xerox your stuff now. Please do not shout. Kasi it's shouting in the middle of the corridor. Teachers and students were coming out. He was screaming and screaming. And then the Xerox lady was so scared. So she said, please, you know, I, I will Xerox yours first. Nagalit din siya kasi Asperger siya. Sinabi niya, but no, that is not fair. The other people were there before me. You should have done it. So, you know, don't Xerox mine first. So, ganun na. So, that would be another. So, this one, we had to make him go on leave of absence. Because he was, he was very much Asperger's. Could not control his emotions. If things just, if things just don't go right. Complain. You know, tantrum. So, uh, isang, isang maliit na bagay lang, pinapalaki. So that's Asperger's. You know, what are the social skills? So that these are just um, the, the the two things. Um, I think so. What we can do is you have to make the routine consistent. So parents, please, especially in the time of the pandemic, if you know that your child is an Asperger's person, actually you might not know. You will have to have the person diagnosed. The ones who do the diagnosis are developmental pediatricians. Avoid sudden changes, but help them understand that things may change. Asperger students complain a lot, and they do not reflect on their strengths. So they keep on blaming other people because they don't have social skills. So you have to help them. Um, the, the, the pediatricians and the psychologists can give you a program on self-regulation. That's what it's called. And help them manage time and resources. How do you raise resilient kids? 
uh, avoid unrealistic. I don't have time to do this, but I promise I will do, I will say, I will do, say a lot about this in the second, two weeks from now. So how to do growth and fixed mindset. If our children are resilient, they have more buffers against mental health issues, even if their genetics is not very good. So our role as parents is to control what we can control. Okay. There are many things outside our control. Genetics and the pandemic are outside our control. But there are things within our control. The way we raise our kids is within our control. The way we communicate with them. The way we treat each other. Importante to, uh, experience disappointment and ensure that they learn. Um, this is a book, 12 Huge Par Mistakes Parents Can Avoid. These are all wrong. We won't let them fail. That's, we have to let them experience a bit of frustration so that they will know how to handle and they will know life cannot, it's not handed to them on the silver platter. We project our lives. We, we, we are not honor students, but we want our kids to be. We prioritize being happy. It's not happiness. Happiness is not even important. It's actually fulfillment. You know, it's, not, it's not pleasure. So we are inconsistent. We sometimes threaten, we sometimes spoil. The kids don't know what we really need. I will say more about this. We remove the consequences. Hindi alam ng bata, we go to the school, magagalit tayo sa eskwelahan, we'll say, make the test easier. That's weird. Hindi kaya ng bata, tutor na kaagad. Come on, let them. Before you go into tutoring, let them study on their own. We distort their potential. We tell them they can do anything, but no, they actually cannot do everything. Like, ako, I wish I can be a ballet dancer, but I cannot. No, I can't. So we cannot, we can, we cannot actually tell them they can be everything they can be. They can be everything they can be subject to certain constraints. We won't let them struggle or fight. Yana. Di nila kaya, we do things for them. Helicopter na tayo. We give them what they should earn. We don't even give them chores. They want this iPad, we buy it for them. Why? Let them earn it. We praise the wrong things. We praise them for their looks. We praise them for their grades. We don't praise them for, for, for their being, for their virtues. We remove all pain. Ay nako, so wala. They cannot endure hardship. Atrophies, we do it for them so they become lazy, unmotivated, disabled. We prepare the path in, we prepare the path for the child instead of the child for the path. Their childhood, they're okay. But once they go into middle school, high school, their mental health issues come. And adulthood, they, they it's bleak. Noon, if the child doesn't do well, the parent tells the child, Ano ba? You have to do better. Ngayon, if the child doesn't do well, the parents get mad at the school. A big difference. Helicopter parent. We don't want to do this. Whether their children need them or not, they're always there. I will end with these ones. I, these are actual things I show my students when they start complaining. I said, guys, you count your blessings rather than your burdens. The mere fact, I tell my students, we can still do online learning today even if it is not perfect and there's so many flaws, it's still a blessing. Other people who desperately want to learn have no money to enroll. It's basically it. Make the most of what you have. Gratitude is such an important thing. People who have a lot of gratitude normally don't have as many mental health issues. They're too busy being grateful. And I tell my students, if you really want to heal yourself, you have to go beyond the self. I have to quote Father Nebres. Father Nebres is a former Ateneo president, and he has helped me with some of the worst cases because he has a very kind heart with the worst cases in the students. And he told me in the end with our worst cases, in the end, he said, the only cure for mental health is for them to stop thinking of themselves all the time and to go beyond the self. Social media is always me, me, me. Ako yung pinakamagaling, ako yung pinakamaganda. Everything is me. Ano yung problema ko? Poor me. But you know, there's so many other people who are worse. And if they can reframe their perspective and think about other people, it will actually, it won't make them ecstatic, but it will make them have a purpose in life. It will make them stop trying to harm themselves. Again, Mahatma Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. That's it. Thank you and stay well and God bless. I will have time for questions. It's 1130. Thank you, Dr.
in a show off for the very informative and very inspiring talk. So we will now proceed with the question and answer portion. You may now type in your questions in the comment box. Thank you. So um, the, there is a, there, actually there is a, a comment and a question here from, um, from my teacher. Good morning, Po. Thank you for this informative talk. I believe that this will really help the community in widening our horizon in understanding mental health. I am a teacher and I was diagnosed with moderate depression and anxiety last February and my doctor prescribed me medicines to aid my sleeping pattern problems and mental breakdowns. I had to take it for several weeks, but I myself decided not to continue with my meds, but just tolerate my episodes. I also decided not to attend my mental health sessions anymore, but rather take care of myself by just doing things I love. I discontinued talking to my doctor since community lockdown. I just watch videos and do self-meditation because I think I can carry myself since classes are also rolling. I don't have much time to go to the clinic. My question is, in doing this, how would I know if I really recovered from my mental health struggle and may full stop in seeking professional help? I trust that you will, yeah, that's it. I'm not too happy that you stopped seeing the doctor. Uh, moderate depression is still moderate. It's not mild. If I were you, I would continue seeing that. You don't have to see, you know, this is a psychiatrist. You don't have to physically see him. Um, he can, he, I know he already prescribed medications for you. Some medications would have side effects. Actually, all medications have side effects. And sometimes students don't like taking it because they say it doesn't work. Honestly, for antidepressants, which probably you have, you know, anti, an, antidepressant or anti ansiolytic uh, from my students' experience, it would take perhaps the third try. So the first one doesn't really work. The second one doesn't really work. I say it depends. It depends on your genetics and your body. So ang ano is, how will you know? You will actually know uh, if, do you feel as if you are back to normal? Okay? Like you don't have to physically drag yourself to go to class. You don't have to physically... Um, say, okay, parang I love my students and I love the work I do and I try to watch videos to make me happy. And when I watch videos, am I okay na ba like before? Or kahit na I watch comedies and ganito, hindi pa rin, I still feel blue sometimes. Ganyan. The thing about mental health is you're the one who knows yourself the best. And asking me a question like that, tatatakot ako ngayon kasi I might tell you the wrong thing. Hindi kita pasyente, hindi kita kilala. What I know is, for our students with severe depression, moderate to severe depression, we almost, we tell them they cannot stop medications without telling their doctor. Remember, I'm a PhD, I'm not an MD. So the doctor you, you talked with is a medical doctor. So I think you should ask him that. You don't ask me this, you should ask him that. Doctor, you know, ito yung, sina, ito yung ginagawa ko kasi all the reasons you gave, I'm almost certain the doctor might say, okay, but the moment you feel worse, you'll have to see me at once. Baka. Some other doctors might say, don't stop the medication. Um, the only thing I'm happy about is you're moderate and not severe. Okay, baka mild pa nga eh. and Again, the diagnosis of depression is on a spectrum. It is based on your doctor's interview with you. Possibly you were given an assessment test. And you know, there, there, are, there are standardized tests that show you where in the spectrum you are. But if I were you, I love the fact that you are self-healing. That is good. So if I were you, I will continue doing everything you're doing. So congratulations. Natutuwa ako that you know you have actually resilience and grit. But again, kahit na may resilience and grit tayo, kung meron kang genetic predisposition. Your parents had it, your lolo lola had it, your siblings had it. Kahit na grit, gritty ka, kahit na resilience ka, gusto ko pa rin para you can have optimum functioning. Think about it for your students. Suppose you're functioning right now on 80%. Perhaps, just perhaps, with the doctor's help, you might function at 100%. And that's better, di ba? So right now, kaya mo, but you might be even better. What we want to do is optimum functioning. We want to, we want to be fully alive. That's St. Ignatius' word. 
human beings fully alive. So, since there is help, meron ka ng doktor na okay, then go for him. If you feel he's not responsive to your needs, there are so many psychiatrists. You can always go to another one. But I congratulate you for your grip. I'm very, very happy that you're doing this. Continue what you're doing, but you may need added help. So, again, you're the only one who will know. So, are you really back to normal? Ito yung takot ko eh. The mere fact that you're asking this question, sorry ah, blanda ko magsalita. The mere fact you're asking this question, you might have doubts or else you wouldn't be asking this question. So, trust your instinct. Kung meron kang doubt na baka kailangan kong balikan ng doktor, trust your gut. You don't have to physically go there. Psychiatrists are some of the easiest people. They can do Zoom all the time. All my psychiatrist friends are doing Zoom. You can do it in your house. So, there's not, you know, kaya yan. And God bless. Congratulations and God bless and take care to this teacher. Next is from Dragon Time 76. Is there an effect on the child when the mother was in deep stress while pregnant with him or her? Does it show once the child is born or it can take effect even when he or she is older? Thank you. Sadly, yes. The psychological studies say yes. If the mother is in considerable stress during pregnancy, it does affect. Will it show up when the child is born? Uh, yes and no. For the severe cases, born na, nakikita na. For the ones not as severe, it will show up later on. But yes. But you know, I don't want to blame the mother. Um, the mother may be under stress because the mother really just could not deal with what is happening. So maybe instead of uh, thinking it is the mother's fault, which I will have to say now, it is not the mother's fault. Okay? Um, the most important thing now is to ensure, one, that the mother now can handle her stress. Okay, so kung pregnant siya, stressful siya, mas bata siya, di niya kaya yung stress, pero ngayon, supportive yung husband, supportive yung pamilya, then meron pang psychologist maybe, then the mother can handle stress, then that would be for me the best prognosis. And secondly, ensure that the child also has the coping strategies, which is basically, ito na yung resilience. Yung parang yes, meron na siyang problema ng kaunti, pero gusto na natin i-attack yung environment. So environment, how do we raise kids to be resilient? And that will be Two weeks from now, I will talk about resilience. So it's not the mother's fault, but the mother should now learn how to handle her stress. So what the man continue lagging stress, or is my anak na, tapos, you know, projecting the stress of the child is the difficult one. So the mother will handle her stress, the child will handle his or her stress, and you know, the family will maybe grow closer. So the mother also, God bless. It is not your fault, but please try to handle your stress now. Next is, how can we start preparing a mentally healthy environment for our smaller kids early on while they are young, while experiencing stressors due to pandemic? Uh, those would be what I said kanina, yung growth mindset. Let them experience failure in a bit. Do not do everything for them. Yung 12 mistakes parents can avoid. So avoid those 12 mistakes and start them young. For the parent who's asking this, I'm so glad that you're doing, your kids are still young because this is the time for you to develop grit and resilience. And how do you develop grit and resilience? You, don't, you avoid being a helicopter parent. You, you let them fail, but the moment they fail, you also say that you love them. You also say failure is a part of life. In short, you let them experience disappointment in small doses when they are young. So that when they experience disappointment when they're adults, they know how to cope. In short, don't do everything for them. Let's not spoil our kids. I will say more about that in two weeks' time. The books I showed you, all the learning strategies books, all of them have strategies on how to make the kids face life, including the independent learning. So those are practical strategies there, which I'll say more about next week, uh, two weeks from now. 
How important is spirituality in the school system? What roles do priests in a Catholic school have in a very academic environment? Because I am Ika in Ateneo, of course, uh, I chose Ateneo actually over UP precisely because Ateneo is Jesuit. So this is my, my personal opinion now. That, of course, spirituality, when practiced well, I would have to say it. Spirituality, when practiced well, meaning it is inclusive and not condemnatory, is a lifeline for students. I like the Jesuits because they're very open. I like St. Ignatius because he doesn't condemn. They're probably one of the most open religious orders. Uh, the, 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 if that is the case, students will know that God is there and God will accept them. God will accept them even if they are gay. God will accept them even if they're a sinner. All of us are sinners. So you um, The toxic spirituality would be certain institutions. I don't think it is St. Jude, but certain institutions. I, I, I'm sure it is not you. You're fine. St. Jude is fine. Um, and St. Jude, your patron saint is even the patron saint of the body. People are in dire need. They pray to St. Jude. So, you know, I think, but uh, from my experience, um, some of my students who were scarred, and they're not Judenites, who were scarred with religion are those who were in families and orders which condemn. So if you're gay, you're a sinner, you go to hell. Mahirap yan eh, mahirap yan. So yung mga ganon, yung, yung mga, yung mga, lagi sila pinapagalitan, rather than, you know, they're being condemned rather than loved. So there are, unfortunately, certain institutions like that. I have not experienced it. I'm so lucky that my schools were, I love my schools, I love Ika, I love Ateneo. Uh, but I hear my students talking about how some of their schools are and they're scarred by it. You know, mom, I cannot even say this because it's a sin. So they're depressed and they are. So spirituality, when practiced in the way, spirituality in, like Christ, which is forgiving, which is merciful, just dying for the people, really yung ganyan, that one is very consoling and that one is very good. But spirituality perverted in other ways is not good. So it depends on the spirituality, but if it's done well, it is a lifeline. How can we convince our fellow parents who are resistant to seeking help or are, or are afraid of the stigma? Yeah. Very good question. Uh, well, I have no idea, you know. I wish I can make bola, but I have no idea. Um, you can, because one, I also don't know the parents in St. Jude. I know several of you, but the climate environment, I don't know. What I can tell you now is what I told you when I started this webinar, that, and what I told Wilson. I told Wilson, is St. Jude ready to hear mental health and suicide? Because the Chinese community, I, I, they don't want to discuss it. Uh, but you are, I mean, you know, more than a hundred of you are here. You're still here. You're asking questions. And maybe this is a start. Maybe you, you can, how do you do it? Tell, maybe one thing, you can tell other parents. Um, you are a good parent. They have to be reassured of that. You are a good parent. And I know you love your children. But your kids are suffering. Your kids are suffering either because you yourself need mental health or your kids are suffering because they need mental health or both. And because I know you love your kids, every parent listening now, I know you love your kids. All of us do. Whatever our kids think, all of us do. So tell them that. Mahal mo ang anak mo. And because you love your kids, you have to seek help for their sake. That might work for parents. So I don't know if this will work. I don't know you enough. But this is a start. I was, uh, I've spoken so many times to St. Jude, like more than 10 times, I think, in my lifetime. Um, and usually you will ask me, my most popular talks among you before the pandemic, ang dami ninyo dun sa auditorium, laki-laki ng ano, uh, was study habits. You always want me to talk about learning well, excelling in school, academic. Usually, ang, magaling na kayo doon. So, ang dami kong talks sa inyo, yun yun. But this is the first time. 
that you actually invited me to talk about mental health and uh Miss Irene, I think, was talking about it. It's a very, you know, I, I, I salute your courage and your openness. It is not easy for you to listen to what I'm saying this morning because it's about death. Many things, it's about preventing death and Kenya. My other two seminars will be lighter, I think. But you're here. So this is a start. And you can tell other parents again because we know you love the kids. You will do this for their sake. I hope that will help. What to do if the child is pretending they are okay but expresses some high risk? Uh, most kids don't pretend they're okay. Not with me. Okay. Um, don't accuse na rin your kid of saying, kasi hindi natin alam na natin siya. So go first with what you see your child doing. So what I said kanina. Uh, Maybe you hear your child crying. Maybe your child is losing weight. Maybe you're, you hear your child shouting and quarreling with somebody over Zoom. Okay, so, so don't first say, you're pretending to be okay even if you're not. You don't know. Okay, you just say this. You say, uh, <clears throat> you seem to be, you are losing so much weight. You're not, you're not, you're not, um, you, you, you look as if you're sick. Are things okay? Yes, things are okay. You can go on. <clears throat> but if they were okay, why are you, why did I hear you shouting over this? Mom, I told you, it's okay. <laughs> okay, I am just worried about you. And please know that I'm here anytime you want to talk. Let it go for a while. And then monitor the child for it without being intrusive, without being helicopter. You will see it naman eh. Um, many times though, when sa akin talaga, they don't, I never have, I usually don't have students telling me they're okay if, if they're not. But they do tell me they, oh yeah, maybe this one. And this came from a Judenite. Ayun, pala. Okay. It's a good thing you brought up this question. So this is a one of a very good Judenite, and she's she, she's doing well. She's still in Ateneo now. She's actually doing okay in online learning. But I've been, you know, she asked for a consultation with me every week. The last time I talked with her was last week. Uh, and then she is not, she's seeking help from our guidance counselor. But because she's 20 years old, we don't have to tell her parents. She's not major depression, but she has a lot of anxiety. So, the panic attack, ganyan. So, I had to refer her to the guidance counselor also. Uh, she told me, so I asked her, do your parents know that you're feeling this? Mom, no, and please don't tell them. So, I said, look, if this, if this is life and death, the school has no choice but to tell your parents. Hindi naman life and death. So, we were not telling the parents. Parang she's coping better now. But this is what she told me. She said, I said, why don't you want to tell your father or your mother? Ang sinabi niya, because they're already so anxious in this pandemic. I do not want to add more to their worry. Yan ang sinabi niya. So I do not know if this might be the case. So ang bait niya, I really like her. But I told her, look, if something happens to you and they don't know anything, it will make them feel worse. It will make them, you know, act worse. So you actually have to tell them. Ayo pa rin niya sabihin. And I cannot, I cannot, we cannot inform the parent because she's past 18 of this one, especially since she's not suicidal anyway. She's having panic attacks lang and she's having insomnia. Yung mga ganon. So nakokontrol pa namin. Pero ayo niyang sabihin sa parent kasi raw, yung parents are already so burdened. So for some parents here, if you are com consistently complaining about the pandemic, if you keep on telling kids, alam mo, ang hirap na to, you know, lang bots, you know, you know, wala tayong pera because, you know, somebody lost his job. You know, especially if they're high school and college, they will not want to tell you anything. Si mabait sila. They don't want to burden you. So kahit that they're not doing well, they will pretend they're okay because they don't want to burden you. I don't know if this is the case with the parent, but thank you for asking that because this is from a Judenite. I would have to tell her that I use her as an example. I didn't know I would talk about her, but you know, she, she's still with us. She's doing okay, but she doesn't want us to tell her parents. And we don't have to do it because she's not, she's not an imminent risk. Her grades are still okay. You know. 
Um, another question is, what advice can you give the school on how to create a support environment and organization? I think the school already has, oh, sige, this is what I'll tell you we did at Ateneo. Uh, I sounded the call on mental health as early as 2013, before it became a fad, because students were already having a lot. And the good thing with the, my fellow teachers, many responded to the call. So what do we have now? We have the formal structure, which stems from Vice President of Loyola Schools, and malakas yung guidance counseling namin. The guidance counselor is uh, a friend of mine, and I really talagang text ako talaga kung may problema, and he immediately, you know. So yung, yung head guidance, meron kaming eight, eight clinical psychologists. I demanded clinical psychologists because for depression and suicide, the ordinary licensed guidance counselors who are very good and nice are not enough. So the guidance counselors can deal with moderate issues, but for suicide ideation, you need a psychologist more than a counselor. So what do we have? We have eight clinical psychologists. We have, I think, another eight guidance counselors. So the guidance counselors also are, they're very good. So, you know, we have clinical psychologists for the more serious cases. We have the guidance counselors for the cases that study habits, mga mas, mas, mas puede, kaya na yun. And we need so many because there's so, we have hundreds of students who are mentally have a problem. So, so we're fully booked, sobrang dami. Uh, so that's what we have. And then we also have, um, ambula we have a stable of resources. So doctors and clinics that will take our students. Meron na kami, we establish them na. Some of them are at the back of my lifeline book. So I told you the book kanina, you know, nandiyan lahat yung mga sino yung tinatawagan namin. Ganun. So, so if, but psychologists are not enough. Eh. So many times I will tell the guidance head that this student needs medication na. Alam ko needs medication na. But I cannot, I'm not an MD. I cannot, even if I know the medications, I cannot prescribe it. So for serious cases, before we even go to guidance, the school already calls up the medical city, um, St. Luke's, you know, certain people there we trust. And then the retinal, we make appointments for the child to go to medication kaagad. And if the child we feel is a, is a potential risk to himself and to the community. I, I still haven't talked about the community yet kasi wala. I am knocking on wood that we will not go the way of America. Wherein you have students going in and just shooting people. But I'm very worried about that because if students are very angry, especially if they're bullied by classmates or they're socially, yung mga Asperger's na may depression, natatakot ako sobra doon. The ones who are always online and they, and they watch dark movies, we don't know. So if we feel that there are students who are a potential risk, some of my students, I, we, we talk to the parents, we call the parents in, and we tell the parents directly now that we are not allowing the student back on campus, LOA, kami na nabibigyan ng leave of absence. The student cannot be back on campus unless we get a signed confirmation from the psychiatrist, psychologist, we trust that the, it's safe for him to go back. So meron kami, an, sanay na kami doon. Um, in very bad cases, like attempted harming, self-harm, and jumping or something, uh, kilala na namin yung ambulance. So maraming beses the ambulance will go into our campus and that's it. Parang, so we already have these in place. The other one we have in place is we also have a hotline. We have a mental health hotline where students can call and they hopefully should be helped even at night because many times their depression acts up at night. Uh, aside from that, I am the head of a group of 50 very generous faculty from every department in the Ateneo. We have given them seminars. We have given them lots of training on, so what I tell my students is sometimes if you're reluctant to talk to even the guidance counselor, many students actually prefer talking to teachers. So the train namin itong army of faculty, and they work with me. So they will tell me, Queen Ameno, so it's it's a it's in short, it's a community effort. Uh, 
because this mental health thing is so big, at least in our campus, sa, in, sa amin kasi college, eh. college is the most risk. High school and college are the most risk. Sad to say, there are now cases in the grade school, etc. cetera, but uh, in, according to research, it's high school. So we, we get the brunt of the whole thing. That's why we know, maybe the advice that we give to the school is, it is a community effort. We cannot just say it, kasi noon, kung may problema, oh, guidance, tapos na. Hindi, hindi na. Ngayon, hindi ang kaya. Guidance is very important, but they cannot do it alone. So the community effort will be uh, a structured school wherein the guidance is very active. The teachers are also know what to do. So you, you might need debriefing for teachers. So I've done like, I've done this for more than 10 schools. In talagang session after session on what the, what the signs are and what to do. Um, Lalo na for Asperger's. What, what to do if your kid is an Asperger in your class? You know, what kind of group work do you do? Mga uh, and then, so your guidance, you have teachers. And of course, I give parent talk. So we have, so if you have these three, you have the guidance, you have the teachers, you have the admin and the parents. It's a whole community ngayon to be able to do mental health. Pero guys, for the parents, you have something that we don't have. For the parents, you have the children in their formative years. Kami sa Ateneo, when they come to us, hindi siya nag-uumpisa sa Ateneo eh. Every single person with mental health problems in Ateneo already had mental problems before. For the serious ones, it was already starting in grade school. So kahit na genetics ganyan, the parenting is so important pa rin. Kahit na it is not your fault if your kids do that, but even if it's not your fault, we still have to try our best. So parents, you have something. Please, I think one reason why I said yes to this one is I want, we want to minimize the number of mental health cases that come to us in college. And we have to start with parents who are raising their kids young. So you might experiencing failure, you don't indulge them too much. Importante yon. They need to be resilient even when they're young. Resilience is not something when they're old. Okay, marshmallow test, you know that one, Google that. They have to be able to pass the marshmallow test. Walang instant gratification. Kung pwede, walang social media at all. Walang gadgets. Walang gadgets. They don't need gadgets now. Even with online learning, young children, two, three years old, they don't. You might need gadgets when they're five years old. Two years old, nope. Especially not the instant gratification culture. But, but that one is for two weeks from now. I will say more about that. So for the school, you need the entire community. It takes a village to raise a child. There are um, a lot of parents, teachers, and students who want, who want to get in touch with you. Then what's the best way to connect with you? I'm sorry. Um, I'm really sorry because I cannot do one-on-one. -on -one. Can you get ganito? Can you get the book? Look at the resources at the end. And then the resources are, are resources we have personally used. So these are people who, who, are, who have all the time to, not all the time, but they, they, don't, they don't do many things. So I'm, I'm, I can barely breathe. And my responsibility is to my Ateneo students. Um, I have to turn away even at the Neo grade school and high school parents because get first, get the books, read Lifeline. Many of the questions you're going to ask are already there. Second, if you find that if you feel that your child really needs help, go to the resources at the back and then call them. If you feel your child still needs help, talk to the school. Talk to the school, talk to your guidance, talk to the teacher, brainstorm. When I say need help, I'm assuming my medication and therapy na to. By that time, I think you don't need me na. I think you don't need me na. Um, if it's something really, really, I, I get kasi tons of emails a day. And unless it is my student's email, I, I, I sometimes don't open them. Because the world needs a lot of help, but there are resources. And St. Judith's a good school. I think perhaps uh, might be good for the PAG. I think you call them, it's PAG, parents group. For the PAG <coughs> to help each other. 
Um, I, we have a very active parents group. Wilson, I know you're active in Savior. Uh, Savior just recently launched its hotline, thank God. So okay na rin yung Savior with the hotline. Um, for the parents group, uh, especially Irene, I think you were the one who sounded this call. If the parents can, you know, provide each other with support, uh, even with respecting confidentiality, that it might be a good thing. So the support you need is is dapat environment. Kasi kung estudyante to, tapos St. Jude yung bata, we want the child to be able to flourish in St. Jude. So it has to be the learning environment in the school. So my heart goes out to you, but I have a public email. Um, people know, so I get, you know. But I, I pre- I'm really sorry. Um, I prioritize my students. So kasi estudyante ko eh. And ang dami nila. So, I, I keep on telling people I will, I will read the emails when I have time, but somehow I cannot breathe. I, I don't know when I'll have time. Because it doesn't end. Uh, but, but I have faith in you. For the parents, maybe look at the resources first. Look at the resources, and I think what Johnny was saying a while ago is very important. Uh, when you read the book, you should also practice it. We have scripts for you. Talagang scripts and reasons why you say these things. So if you look at the script, you will say, bakit, bakit ito yung sabihin po? It, meron pa kaming do not say this. You know, do not say, when I was your age, I was already, you know, supporting my family. Why are you so weak now? Don't say that. That's a very Chinese thing. And it could be true. It is true. At your age, you are more resilient. But we don't say it. So there are things you can say, things you don't say. So maybe that's the reason why I write the books. Because lots of what you can do are already there. So read it. And more importantly, not just read it. As Johnny told us a while ago, practice it. It will feel foreign at first if, you, if, if you're not used to reflective reasoning. Ganyan. But practice it. So there are do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts. And this is what you do. This is what you do. These are all the myths and the warning signs. So nandyan siya lahat. Uh, you can always get my email, but I cannot promise. I'm really sorry. I don't, I cannot make promises. I may not be able to keep because of the tons of emails I get, I prioritize the people I directly deal with. So I prioritize my students. We will definitely buy the book. Ah, okay. And read, and, and, and read it. it, yes, and practice it. So friends, if you want to have a copy of the, of the book, you can buy it um, from, from, from the bookstores or you can I check do. out anvilpublishing.com. Um, the other books of Dr. Kinashua are, are also there. Um, For the grid resilience, I will also say a bit of that in my book launch. So if you're, if everyone is free, they don't, they don't need registration anymore. You can just go to the Facebook Live, Anvil Facebook Live stream. I will talk a bit about grid and resilience, but I promise I will talk about that in two weeks for the parents, for you. There is a last question here, Dr. Shua. Um, how can we establish some form of normalcy amidst the pandemic and how can we help support each other at home? Uh, the form of normalcy will be you should still create the structures that you used to do. So the learning structures, which means go live as often as you can. Ensure that the students also still have homework. Ensure that they learn. Yes, the modalities are different. So in short, you want the kids to still do something productive because if they don't, then they have all the time in the world to think about what's happening. Distraction in this case, okay? Distraction from anxiety is good. Distraction from learning is not. So the new normal for the pandemic would be, kasi sinabi ninyo, how do you want to retain a sense of normalcy, di ba? And the sense of normalcy would, I think, mean going back to the old normal. So we try to also establish structures that will ensure that as much of the old normal is still there. And for the teachers, it might be a teacher who is asking this. I think my third, my third uh, talk for you is really for the teachers. Um, many of the students are complaining, not just Judenites, and many, that many teachers have no idea how we need to do online learning. Sometimes they don't meet at all. Sometimes, you know, they... So there, there are some ways of doing that. And that will be for the third talk. 
But to answer more, what structure, so establish a structure that is going to give students a sense of normalcy. What is a sense of normalcy? So students are used to learning in school. So we will try to establish a structure that ensures they still learn even while they're physically at home, their minds are not at home, their minds are actually learning. And that will be the focus of the next talk. That's the independent learning. So how do they become independent learners while maximizing the resources the school has? And I will say more about that uh, for parents in the next talk and for teachers in the third talk. I think. So that would be the, because that's another, I don't to there. And the easiest thing for sense of normalcy would be the slide I showed you, Kanina. Please do not obsess about things you cannot control and focus on the things that you can control. If the students are focusing on what they can learn, they would have less time to do social media. They would have less time to do gaming. They would have less time to ruminate over themselves and rumination is scary. Rumination is, Nako, things are bad, that I'm going to die, that wala na, they paralyze themselves. But if you have so many things, and lastly, as I said, Father Ben says, sense of normalcy. Hindi ko alam kung normal kasi ito sa atin. Eh. Parang hindi eh. Uh, but maybe one big thing for this one is, can we now, maybe if there's a silver lining in the pandemic, can we also, by our actions, show our children that we really have to take care of people who are more vulnerable. As uh, si Father told us, um, Father Roland and, and Father Paulino told us a while ago, that right now, we are, we are so blessed. I, I am so blessed. I'm so blessed to be talking to you. All of you, with all our problems, with all of our anxieties, we're so blessed to be, to be still doing this. And there's so many people who cannot. Nako, ibang kwento na if I tell you what I talk to public school. Wala silang Zoom. They cannot afford Zoom. So I've given talks to public schools na, you know, Skype sila. Ang daming problema talaga. Ibang talagang ibang klase yung problema nila sa problema natin. So that one humbles me. So every time my student complains, I would just tell them quietly about the public school. Normally, they stop complaining. So we think about other people. And this might not be the old normal because the old normal, I have no idea how, how often we think about other people. But this pandemic heightens the inequality among us who have and many who don't. So new normal, I'm hoping the new normal and the old normal, the new normal will have also us thinking about other people. If you're helping other people, you have no time to be depressed, seriously. You might become, you know, you, you, you're not ecstatic. Helping other people is not easy. Minsan nakakaidita, minsan nakakapagod, but you're not depressed. You don't want to kill yourself, actually. You know, so that, that one is important. So, you know, the, the, whether it's new normal, old normal, talagang, especially in the Philippi community, let us really help each other, not just through donations. Yes, donations are important, but really getting to know the people who are vulnerable. What made them this way? What can we really, what structures can we do to help them? I will say more about that also in two weeks' time. You're, wow, my God, you're still yeah. here. I, I cannot believe that the parents stayed for so long. Uh, two hours. Yeah. yeah. So that's, once again, thank you very much, Dr. Queen Di Chu, for your valuable time. We are really grateful for this opportunity. And we know that you're very uh, busy or fully booked until the early, early next year. We are indeed very lucky to have you for three talks. Thank you, Anya Wilson, for this. Thank you also to your son, Scott, who is, uh, who is with us right Hi, now. <laughs> Hi, Scott. So we would like to present a certificate of appreciation to you, Dr. Kalina Chua. Can we share the certificate, Sir Kenneth? So while we're waiting for the certificate to be here. 
mukhang na natulog ng mga taga Saint Jude. <laughs> Kuya, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I I don't like having I don't like having dead air. So <laughs> um, Johnny, it's okay. I, you can just email me. And yes, we will we will email you and then we will uh, we will send you a physical one as well para ano. Uh, oh. Uh, yes. Para as, but at least my, my, my souvenir ka from St. Jude, as you said, this is the first time you were invited to, uh, to our community. Yes, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. I actually, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm actually very, I was at first apprehensive about how blunt I can be, but the questions are very good. And the parents are, I know all of us love our children and we have their best, I know. It's just that because this topic is not being talked about, uh, yes. so I had to go deep yes. into it. But uh, I appreciate the parents. Wow, my God, this is uh, more than two hours. Talk na nandito pa, nakikinig pa. Maganda yung mga tanong, um, including the teachers, including the brave teacher who talked about her own matter. So I would like to thank you and uh, Father Roland, Father Paulino, uh, you, Wilson, Irene, Beth, everyone here. Um, and uh, I don't know if the same parents will... We'll, I'll see them in two weeks' time because uh, in two weeks' time it will be happier. It won't be as it won't be as <laughs> it won't be as ano as uh. True, very true. <clears throat> but I think a lot of people appreciate it, and, and, and judging by the comments, uh, they they truly um, appreciate of the opportunity to actually have this engagement with you. So, uh, Jehan, uh, yes. the, the certificate. The certificate, design. yes. St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association, St. Jude Catholic School Parents Auxiliary Group, and St. Jude Catholic School award this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Quina Lee Chua for sharing her expertise to the Judenite community as speaker in the webinar, Quina Talks, Boosting Mental Health, via Zoom and YouTube Live, given this 31st of October in the year of the Lord, 2020. Signed, Father Roland Aquino, SVB, School Director, Mr. Johnny C., President, SJCS Alumni Association, Mrs. Elizabeth Colin Chu, President, Early Childhood Department, Parents Auxiliary Group, Mrs. Michelle Yvonne Chon, President, Elementary Parents Auxiliary Group, and Attorney Irene Phoenix Mauricio, President, High School Parents Auxiliary Group. So, Queen, I know that you're, uh, you're, you're very busy. Uh, yes. and thank you very much for sharing this two hours of your time, time. on a weekend with us. Um, yes. um, really, really, really thank you. We, uh, uh, so we'll see you again in two weeks' time. Two right? weeks' time, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank parents you. and God bless. So, thank Dr. Pina, thank you also on behalf of us. Uh, and we really appreciate it. And sino mo makakatulog sa'yo? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so yeah so uh, I, I look forward to the next two ones and uh, yeah wow. this is, yes we, we, this is really a very uh, uh, live uh, what I call that issue for St. Jude now and the, I am thankful for the initiative of the uh, the parents and the alumni association but uh, we are also thinking about this how to reorganize our guidance uh guidance program uh, at the moment because uh, in the past it's heavily ge uh, heavily on the career side you know and now they are of course they are also doing counseling but it seems uh, it's not enough no and so it is something like it is something that we have to to work on uh, to really address this this matter so well thank you father paulino Yes. Uh, this is actually very good. In fact, um, if any other Filipino Chinese school, well, Savior always invites me, so there's no problem. But the, the other yeah. Filipino Chinese school did invite me. I might even say, the unan kayo ng St. Jude. St. Jude is more open to this one. <laughs> 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 and most importantly, our children will thank you for this. That's the most important thing. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Salamat. Thank you so, so much. So, thank you, thank you also. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Kuina, Kuina, before you go, ano lang, one photo up. Yes. So, let's see. Put it on gallery. If you can put their videos on so we can see your faces.
Yes. Father Rocky, nandiyan ka pa? Uh, Scott, Yvonne? Julie? Roland? Uh, Father Rocky pala. Otherwise, nandiyan pa ba, Yvonne? I'm working. Video na lang. So I can take a picture. Yes, okay. Hello, Yvonne. Hello. Picture, picture. <laughs> 